Okay, uh, today we are going to talk about a chapter in physics uh, because it is common to IGCSE, SPM, and also the A levels and STPM. Huh? So I hope uh, a lot of people will benefit from this. Now, the chapter is about the ideal gas equation. Huh? Uh, I know it is not an equation given in the IG syllabus, but I always encourage my students to learn this equation because we can study three laws by using the equation. Okay, so I want to stress here that a gas behaves very differently from a solid and a li liquid because in gases, the intermolecular spacing is very large and therefore the intermolecular forces are very small all right so that is why three factors yeah, among others pressure volume and uh, absolute temperature they are related yeah if you think of a solid or a liquid most of the time under not too extreme pressure, we will say solid and even liquids are not compressible, okay? But uh, the same cannot be said of gases. So the red characters here, P, V and T, I'm going to keep one of them constant at a time, okay? Uh, so that we arrive at the three laws. Now the small n just means the number of moles of gas inside there capital R is a universal gas constant that means it has got a universal value all right so I encourage you to learn or revise this chapter like this whatever I keep in the green color here or turquoise color here will be held constant so to state one of these laws always start with for a fixed mass of gas. Eh? Fixed mass of gas so that N becomes a constant. Yeah? So that N becomes a constant first. Alright? So always remember when you state these three laws, eh? uh, you must mention the mass of gas is fixed. That means nothing enters the system, nothing leaves the system. Number two, R is constant by definition. So look at the left hand side. I encourage you to give it the mathematical treatment. Eh? So for the first one, I would hold, yeah, I would hold volume constant. Eh? So I take the volume over, it becomes green eh, or turquoise there. That means you look at P is proportional to T. Then automatically I can plot the graph that gives me P1 over T1 equals to P2 over T2, eh? which actually is called the pressure law. Eh? So, which states that the pressure of a gas is proportional to its absolute temperature. Now, I must stress on this term absolute temperature. It's not degree Celsius, okay? Uh, provided the volume is constant. Eh? So, the last proviso, very important. Yeah. So, don't forget for a fixed mass of gas and don't forget the last proviso. So for that, you get what is called the pressure law. Right, let's look at the second one. I keep the pressure constant. I keep the pressure constant. Uh, then when I take it over, NRP will be a constant. So V will be proportional to T. V1 over T1 equals to V2 over T2. Again, the T there is absolute temperature which is measured in Kelvin, eh? not degree Celsius. All right. So the volume of a gas is proportional, again, to its absolute temperature, not to its temperature only, eh? to its absolute temperature. So the word absolute is important. Provided pressure remains constant. Eh? We'll see the practical example in a while. The last one is the most famous one. It's called Boyle's Law meaning we keep temperature constant. Yeah? We keep temperature constant. Then PV become a constant, okay? So P1, V1 equals to P2, V2. These are all rectangular hyperbolas. 
meaning you can also say P is inversely proportional to 1 over V. Well, it's the same, yeah? I mean inversely proportional to V, or P is proportional to 1 over V, but this will do. So the pressure of a gas is inversely proportional, so this is the one that's inversely proportional, yeah? To its volume, provided, okay, provided temperature is held constant, yeah? When temperature is constant, of course, absolute temperature is constant. Now, for the benefit of STPM and uh, A-level people, I would uh, urge you to remember, if you increase the temperature, the whole curve is going to shift upwards. Yeah? That means for everything remaining the same, all right, the pressure and volume will give a bigger product. Now, let us look at the implications. Huh? Number one, think of our cooking gas. It comes in a very heavy, thick wall cylinder so that the volume doesn't change. If the volume changes, that means there's an explosion already. Yeah? Alright, so Celsius temperature 25, when you change to Kelvin, please add 273. 273 will do lah. No need to be 273.16 yeah? Okay, theta 2, let's say in a fire, right? Over the festive weekend, you know, you forgot to switch off some circuits or whatever, and there's a short circuit, and the gas inside, the temperature rose to 200 degrees Celsius, right? So again, you calculate T2, it becomes 473 Kelvin. Eh? So it hasn't increased by 8 folds. Not 8 folds, but still, it's 473 compared to 298. So applying the formula, right, which is called pressure law, P1 over T1 is P2 over T2. So please remember, yeah? Please remember, yeah? convert yeah? in all gases calculations, convert temperature to absolute temperature when necessary. And the conversion, if you like, you can write it as theta yeah, plus yeah, 273 yeah, will give you the temperature in Kelvin. All right, so degree Celsius change to Kelvin, you use that. All right, so plunging in, so two atmospheric pressure inside, so probably there's still quite a lot of gas inside. Absolute temperature 298, rose to 473, absolute temperature. So the pressure become almost 3.2 atmospheric pressure. So perhaps the gas tank would explode then. I don't know. Yeah, it depends on the manufacturer. But this is a dangerous thing. Number two, we hold pressure constant. Yeah? So let's recall a little bit. When you hold pressure constant, you are getting Chaucer's law. Huh? You are getting Chaucer's law. So, I put the normal room temperature, 25 degrees. Let's say it somehow dropped to 5 degrees Celsius. Maybe this is in a temperate country. Be very careful, this piston here is airtight. Airtight is to ensure that N is constant. No gas enters and no gas leaves. Yeah? But it's frictionless, yeah? So it's able to come to its own pressure. Eh? So now the question is, when the temperature drops, the volume of the gas will decrease, okay? So again, we calculate T1 like before. T2 will be 5 plus 273. That gives you 278. Substituting in, we get a very slight decrease only here yeah? from 100 cm cube. It decreases to 93 cm cube, and that is Chaucer's law. Okay, uh, for the IG students and O level students, Cambridge board doesn't seem very keen on asking for names of the laws, so they do not. To me, they do not care to test too much about pure memory. Yeah. They want understanding, okay? So in fact, many textbooks I read and many past year questions, yeah, like Boyce Law is not even mentioned, all right? 
but uh, just in case they ask you, you should be able to state lah, it's all there. Uh, that is for the benefit of the SPM student, the A-level student and the STPM student. Now look at the third case. In the capillary tube, yeah? let me trap some air, which you can't see of course, yeah? with 4 cm of mercury. Now mercury is very dense when you trap like that. No air is going to enter, no air is going to leave, meaning we fulfill the condition. Uh, the amount of gas is fixed, okay? So when that becomes the case, PV becomes a constant. So P1, V1 equal to P2, V2. It gives you the famous Boyle's law. All right, be careful. Atmospheric pressure, all students at A level and STPM, I suppose, and maybe also at SPM and O level and IG. Please know that at C level, in a country like Malaysia, the atmospheric pressure is about 76 cm of mercury. Okay? Because mainly we are about sea level. Alright, so you would have to imagine that this air is experiencing the atmospheric pressure plus this 4 cm of mercury. So our unit is cm of mercury, so no need to convert. For this one, don't worry, it's not going to fall down. All right, provided your tube is long enough. Uh, the atmospheric pressure is less uh, deducted by four because you turn the tube the other way around. Uh. So these two are the same tubes. Okay, so the volume is going to increase. Why? Because the pressure has decreased. All right, so if you punch that in, right, this volume, yeah, which is proportional, uh, volume, please, uh, is proportional to length or to height of the column, right? Because volume is cross-sectional area times height. If you were to put an A on either side, it will cancel off. Huh? So the volume increases to 5.6 cm, huh? which is the famous Boyle's Law. Now, the last thing I want to say is this. What is an ideal gas? So once I was a ticker non-stop, when a textbook says an ideal gas is a gas that obeys the ideal gas law. That seems so obvious, huh? but that's what was given. Anyway, I think what we should be worried about is how about real gases? So in many branches of science and uh, physics and uh, engineering, we always start with idealized conditions so that the mathematics is simple. And slowly we will remove the idealizations to make it closer to real life behavior. So it's important that all of you know that real gases behave close to ideal gases, meaning you can consider them as ideal gases provided, number one, easier to meet, low pressure, right? So things like atmospheric pressure and all that is called low pressure. The second condition is hard to meet. It is high temperature. Huh? So meaning Right? The law we're studying is called the ideal gas law, but because most of the time our applications are for real gases at low pressure, therefore the ideal gas theory still applies to a great extent. Uh, seldom in schools uh, at A level we deal with gases at very high temperature. That may be at the university level. Okay, thank you.